Hello, hello. I forgot to switch everybody down, uh, around any overlays uh, because, of uh -oh. course, I did. Uh, we're going to do that really quick. Man, how many episodes have I started like that? That's what I want to know. I, so I want to know. Blogs. So many. Yeah. I, I Maybe I don't want to know. <laughs> how many? Small handful, perhaps. Well, it happens a lot on Terranilius. Can't a be lot, more than about lot. four dozen. <laughs> <laughs> how many episodes of of uh, role-playing games in general have we done? That would be the question. And then to get a ratio of like episodes I've started and had the right <laughs> overlay uh, setup and not. Uh, so this is the thing. I I feel like I don't have an update for Zoom that I should, and it's not telling me that there is one or something like that because I should be able to just drag the boxes around now. That's like the new update for Zoom um, that I've heard about, but uh, I can't, so... I don't know why it's not letting me do it. Uh, I reinstalled within the last two months, and it doesn't let me do that either. Weird. So. I need to look it up. Uh, anyway, cool. We're here with the Hellbreaker sequence. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? Pretty good. Living life. Having fun. Uh, so we are here with the Apocalypse, as we do. And uh, we are starting our second age of the Hellbreaker sequence. I, I thought about it and I decided we're not going to call this season two. And the main reason we're not going to, and just continue, you know, just doing like a, a non season series where it's just, you keep going with episode numbers is because I was talking with David the other day about um, my, my pl kind of like future plans with the Hellbreaker sequence. And remember how we talked about this when, when I pitched it originally as like three campaigns where it's like, we do the stuff on this world with the apocalypse, and then we do the like generation ship traveling the stars, and then we do the arrive at the planet, and, you know, all, with all the kind of backstory stuff that I was talking to you guys about. Um, and so I think those will be maybe not seasons, but like different parts of the Hellbreaker sequence. I think it's going to be all one sequence, right? It's the Hellbreaker sequence. It's it's a sequence of you know, interconnected campaigns. And so I figured, well, it's just the this is just the first whatever of the Hellbreaker sequence. We don't need to name it anything yet until we, uh, you know, get to the second thing, whatever that's going to be. So we're here with age number two of the Hellbreaker sequence, and uh, the thing I mean I want to start with is the thing that we really should start with, and that is the fact. So we uh, Connor and I did uh, his age turn stuff for the recollection. And uh, it turns out he was able to drum up a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six surpluses uh, because he has four needs. And that means he has enough to just build a wonder right away. It's not like a game-changing wonder. It's actually a pretty interesting wonder to just start the game off, off with right away. Uh, it should lead to a lot of really interesting things in the, in the setting. It doesn't actually affect any other faction. Uh, but it does give options to the other factions in the future. Can you so, define what a wonder means in this game? Yes, of course. Yes, I don't so, know if I know. Yes, age number two, we're adding the rule in legacy uh, wonders. So wonders are special things that your either events or buildings or cultural shifts that uh, um, are important and special and change the setting somewhat. They can be built with surpluses. So now the right before it was like, let's get surpluses so that we can not be, not have a low mood and be able to survive stuff. Now it's let's get surpluses so we can build cool things. So that is going to be really fun. Like there's stuff like total war. You can literally just start a war if you wanted to. Um, and like all of the other factions have to like roll to see what the, their you know, effect of the war will be on them. That sort of thing. Um, so there's a list of them in each of the books, actually. So uh, if you want to, Carl's, after we're done here, I can just we can look through them real quick and see if there's any fun ones that you might be interested in with the heralds, because um, there's a lot of really cool stuff that we could work towards with the heralds uh, that would be fun. Um, but uh, that's kind of like going to be the main gist of the second age here is wonder building. Probably uh, I know Josh and Jared are very interested in building some wonders. Uh, Connor's going to start off with one pretty pretty much right away. And uh, yeah, I'm sure there will be one or two that will catch your eye as well, Carly. Um, that might be cool for the Heralds to invest in. So yeah, basically you need 
um, certain requirements for uh, a wonder to be built. Um, and let me just double, I'll, I'll uh, read off kind of what a wonder is in the book specifically, like mechanically. So uh, each wonder has five requirements, right? Five surpluses. To mark off a requirement, either erase the indi Oh, okay. So I guess there's different types of uh, requirements. So to mark off a requirement, either erase the indicated surplus or perform the indicated action. Describe the preparations your family goes through to funnel this into the wonder's creation. So you can do this at any time, right? At any point you get the surplus you need for a specific wonder, you can just mark it off and say, we're working on it. And, you know, check off the box. So you don't have to have all of them at one time. Um, to, to build it. You can just slowly work at it. Um, though, if your preparations are destroyed, remove a mark from a requirement. So narratively, things could happen that would erase the surplus or the action if someone like directly sabotaged it or something, right? Um, that could be something that happens. Uh, when you mark off all requirements, the wonder is complete. Everyone else rolls 2d6 with these modifiers. Uh, plus one, they have a treaty on the wonder's owner. Minus one, they don't have treaty on the wonder's owner. Plus one, they have a surplus matching one of the wonder's requirements. Minus one, they don't have a surplus matching one of the wonder's requirements. Plus one, they erase a surplus matching one of the wonder's requirements. Uh, so right, those are all factors that can go into when a wonder is built, it affects the other factions. Uh, and then they roll 2d6 and uh, on his minus six, it's basically like an age turn, right? On a six minus, they pick one trial for their family and the owner picks another. <clears throat> On a seven to nine, and a seven to nine, either they pick a trial and the owner picks a fortune, or vice versa. On a ten plus, the, they pick one fortune for their family and the owner picks another. You resolve the fortune and trials, and then set up a new set up a new. Oh, what? Resolve the fortunes and trials, and then set up a new age, as per the updating the map section. What? <laughs> I did not know that about wonders. Apparently, wonder creation automatically makes a new age so i guess let's say that this is just going to be for the last age really this let's let's all okay, let's yeah. roll it all in because that would just be weird and unnecessary i don't want to do a second age exactly. turn we that, haven't even explored this one yet exactly that doesn't make any <laughs> yeah. sense uh but um you got to keep that in mind for when the wonder does happen um that it will it will change the setting and uh we'll do an age turn um cool so there are some wonders in the book here and but let's look real quick at the one that connor's gonna make and then we'll start with that i i Does think carly it's different it what just carly know what it is the wonder you're gonna build no no i'm excited to see both of your faces uh all right so let's see here now it doesn't have listed any fortunes or trials so I don't think we do the roll thing like normal, right? Uh, but there are permanent things that happen. Um, right. Like there, there aren't any options to choose for the wonder for the fortunes and trials list, so I assume we don't roll. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna describe it here. Uh, it's called the Airy, A E R I E. The gods of old were aloof and unknowable uh, in their demands for sacrifice and promises of retribution. They all have been humbled by the horrors of the fall and now walk among us. You have enticed a powerful sentience from this strange and broken world to the airy. Now you dance the delicate and complex ballet of masters and servants. So he has marked off um, rare materials, um, safety, trade, <laughs> I'm sacrificing safety, and artisans to build this. Ooh. Um, once all of those are invested, summon the visitant. Perform a rite of power in a place of solace and beauty. When summoning the visitant, the owner determines the nature slash identity and the core agenda of the visitant, if this has not already been established in the fiction. Every other family says one way the visitant wrecks... Oh, 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 okay. I didn't read this part. Every other family says one way the visitant wrecks havoc on their family's holdings, society, or plots and gains a need of the GM's choice. Okay, so this actually does affect the... Uh, I literally didn't read that before. This is incredible. I love this. Oh, no. This is going to be interesting. I'm not a fan. <laughs> um, and then there's a permanent bonus that happens from this. When a family requests an audience with a visitant, any family, their modifier for uncover secrets is boosted by spending points of treaty on the owner instead of data. 
when the owner rolls to uncover secrets, they gain advantage if they include the visitant in their consultation, although the answers will be colored by the visitant's opinion. So uh, any character can petition the visitant for a powerful boon, and they pay for this boon with a quest. Those are the effects of this um, of this thing. So, oh, yeah. Come, for- come to the deity I just created and ask for your boon. <laughs> exactly. So it sounds like there's a whole lot of... Go ahead. What are you saying, Connor? I just said perform your penances. <laughs> what are you saying, Josh? Oh, it sounds like there's a whole lot more narrative attached to this than just, look, there's a new thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so let's let's talk through this then. Um, first, Connor, what is the nature slash identity and core agenda of the visitant? Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, it's definitely a Tannerin. Yeah, obviously. Um, uh, nature identity, identity meaning like name like who, or who is it? What is it? Okay, so it's a Tannerin. Um, I would say if, if there's some sort of hierarchy mm-hmm. among the Tannerin, he's one of like the ten demon lords or whatever. Okay, so um, I know who this is, Connor. This is the Black General. Um, oh, okay. This is the um, the Tanner. It's it's just surprising to me that you knew exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I know who that is. Uh-huh. Um, well, it's it's the, basically because well, so, he was in a previous session. He right? was in a previous like session. David's you weren't character? in. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's what I was just going to describe. Oh, that I was. Mm-hmm. Oh, this okay. is the Tanneran that entreated with Beirus and tried to get mm-hmm. him to join, to make have the Perihelions join the Tanneran. It was this close to actually happening, and that would have completely changed the Perihelions. Uh, direction, um, but he ended up dying. Mm, higher hell killed. Higher hell killed him. Yeah, <laughs> to stop that from happening. Um, so cool. the black general, basically uh, in the canon, right? And just make sure this actually fits with what you're thinking, um, is basically the Tanneran who's kind of like in charge of this war on this planet right now, right? Um, he's one of the ten demon lords or whatever it is in the setting, in like the, the larger setting. But he's like the big guy in charge of this planet, basically. He's like the guy who's leading the war effort. Would you want that guy, or would you want like a uh, a lieutenant or someone? Well, I'm thinking of someone different, but I want to know what was the last thing that Black General did. Like, what was his last goal besides the whole Beirut thing? Like, what was he trying to accomplish? With like, give me that... give me a little bit of like who he who he is or what he was last doing. Basically, if I remember correctly, and you can if you remember anything from this, Carly, I know you have notes on some of this stuff. Um, yeah, you want to check that and just see if anything I'm about to say is not right. Um, I think it was like, you know, Beirut join us. We want the Perihelions on our side because we're like going to invade this place and take it over once and for all. Like we're going to bring the Tanner in as a horde and, you know, consume everything, like make everyone worship the Tanner in They're They're, he's, he's basically building up for like the, the final push into the, through the cracks of the world soul to erupt in a swarm of Tanner in. Does it fit with his character that he would sit on a throne and give people boons and quests? Probably not, actually. That's that's what I'm thinking. It just doesn't sound like. Yeah. I'm thinking of uh, like two brother Tannerin, and one is like the destructive, um, conquer the world, uh, black general Tannerin, and the other one is like the inquisitive, like uh, brainiac one. So like one is the force and one is the like intellect. That is really interesting, and I love it. Um, do you want them to be lieutenants in this army? Or do you want the black general to have a counterpart? What do you mean? As in, like, maybe the black general is also, like, he's in charge with his brother. And we have we just hadn't met him yet. I still don't understand. It's probably the four hours of sleep, but... B- basically what I'm saying is, do you do you want these two brothers, Brother Tanner and... And I'm not even sure if Tanner and really have family, familial relationships, but, you know, metaphorically, the brothers. Yeah. Um, are they lieutenants? Are they, like, people who are really, like, are definitely high up in the hierarchy, but aren't, like, the, pe- the two people in charge of this place? Or are they the two that are in charge of this place? Because I'm totally fine with Bane saying, oh. like, the black general has a counterpart, and it is the intellect guy. Um, he doesn't necessarily have to be the counterpart if you don't want him to be, but uh, I think he should be vying to be the counterpart. You know what I mean? He's not mm. necessarily a lieutenant in the army. I think he's kind of his own thing. He's kind of like he's kind of like Scar, 
um, like okay. how Scar is to Mufasa. He's like he's he's trying to start his own hierarchy. Right. He's he's not really playing the Black General <laughs> game. Mm-hmm. So, and I I think the Black General probably thinks what he's doing is very forbidden, and like this is not the tradition of our people. We don't we don't mingle. Oh, with the people I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, doing. so the guy that you want. So are we? Are you saying that there are two Tannerin that are the the visitant, or just the intellect one is the visitant? The just the intellect one is. Yeah. The visitant. Okay, that makes way more sense. Yeah. Okay, that that makes sense for what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm down with that. I'm down with the, what you just described there, right? There's a scar type uh, figure in the among the Tannerin who's not quite on on board right. with the Black Generals like conquer the world plan and has a different idea for how to yeah. go about this it's entirely possible that um this guy is the actual guy who the new harmony kind of is in tr- like cahoots with because that right the, i don't know if the um i don't know if the new harmony would be following the black general necessarily if his goal is like actually conquer the world um up to you josh obviously depends on what really the end purpose of the Tannerin's um, so I think it it could go either way I don't necessarily like the idea of them following the Maverick yeah as being like so I haven't thought sense. too far ahead in terms of who was their main point of contact yeah. and kind of like I'll have to think about that one and get back okay. to you. And maybe it's not at even some clear point when it becomes relevant because yeah. for now I don't think I don't think anybody's characters or families would know that the answer sure. to that question. Okay. I'm Perfect. not even sure that even people at Episcadzos's level would Do. quite okay. know that answer. Perfect. I think it's one that's... or two steps above him yet. Yeah, that's totally a, a fine answer to the question. Yep. The, the, the people who are so far up there, they don't care about the day-to-day workings of the family anymore. Mm-hmm. They're really barely sane. No, no <laughs> yeah. they're 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 barely they're stretching the limits of the definition of insane <laughs> on the upper end of the spectrum. Uh huh. Yeah. Sure. So. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be that'd be good. That'd be good then. Um. So yeah, I like the idea that the recollection has been consistently in treating with these rogue maverick Tanneran, where there are some among the Tanneran ranks that aren't just like pure evil. Let's just kill everyone. It's like there are some of them that either don't understand their role in the ranks yet or like like friend, right, who is like a baby Tannerin um, or um, like this maverick you're describing who maybe disagrees with the way that the corruption of this planet should should occur uh, or what exactly that corruption even means. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely down with that. Uh, do you have a name for them? Uh, it doesn't have to be like an like a personal name but like a title or something what do they call them this maverick tanner and that's now kind of giving people boons connor is this question for me yeah okay yeah um, what, what's the recollection like call the uh the the visitant it could just be the visitant but yeah i kind of like the visitant but i'm trying to think if there's something that sounds better the visitant sounds like something that the recollection would call him. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, or maybe something synonymous with the visitant. Um, I don't know. What would I feel like the inquisitive one would either um, maybe has a name for himself? No, actually, I think I think he specifically doesn't have a name for himself, and he's curious to see what the people call him. Because he's trying to play mind mind games. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Okay, so visitant is actually like a, a word that specifically means like a supernatural being that like comes. <clears throat> um, really? So like, I guess that makes sense. Synonyms for it is like apparition, appearance, banshee. Demon is literally a synonym. Um. <laughs> You know, I think I think the visitant is uh, probably the coolest way of putting it. The uh, most one, unique way of putting it. Too. One other way would be the vision. Uh, maybe not, because they have visions. Yeah, that's fair. 
unless unless there's some sort of like um, way that they're calling him the vision because uh, they don't get their prophecies and, and their truth from the visions anymore. This is like an involvement of their society is now he's the vision. And we, we get I mean, our we I get think our that's instruction true about your society because remember before your leadership was seers that interpret portents hidden in lyrics and videos from before and you changed it to yep. a ringleader that holds the reins of power and pass them on to an appointed yeah. successor. So he's the vision. Yeah, he's the vision. Yep. That is a very sinister twist on it. Yeah. Uh, from uh, our current background too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. oh, that's great. Cool. So he's called Division. Um, lit. Let's see here. Okay. So, what is the core agenda of the Vision? Oh uh, boy. What do they want? Why are they here? Why did they answer your summons? Oh, sorry. That was an alarm. Um. I don't know if I, I don't know if uh, if he did. I mean, obviously, mechanically speaking, we gave up those things to summon him. But I don't know if necessarily it was nece it was it, it has to necessarily be we sacrificed these things and obtained him as much as he came and we lost these things because of him. You know what I mean? No, I don't. So, uh, to explain it mechanically, you know, we, like, I spent these surpluses to g obtain this wonder, but in all reality, it could be that the the vision guy, um, the, the vision came, and because he entered into the recollection, we lost safety. We lost our artisans. We no longer look at the visions the same way that we do, but, like, he came of his own volition, and we just accepted him. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so is his I feel like goal... that makes more sense for his character. Yeah. The, like the Vision's character. Is his goal um, then he... specifically to just... Like, like why? Right? Like, why does he... Maybe I just missed it again. But, like, if he came here specifically to, what, help these people, but for what particular reason? <laughs> to be honest... I kind of want to keep some of that a secret. Right. But I'll... Okay. I'll uh... but, but I guess in terms of just a core agenda, right? Like, what is its general... Um, uh, again, I'm like trying to think of a synonym for the word agenda, but, right, like, its purposes in, in a general sort of way, just so we have an idea of, like, the sort of answers it will give um, in terms of, like, is it is its agenda about, you know, corruption or conquest or messing with people like what is its kind of general thing i'm 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 texting you, you right now and you can tell me what you think is necessary for to be spoken out loud or what is what can okay. be a secret sure are you, you texting or messaging on facebook uh no the chat the zoom chat oh, zoom chat okay Yeah, I, I think the, the answer we'll give for now is he messes with people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, he seems to be some kind of mischief. Yeah. Some yeah. kind of source of mischief or trouble. Yeah. I would say more to the population, he seems like a benevolent god. But like maybe a very cryptic god. Like a lot of the yes. the things he says, it's like he act, comes off as benevolent, but the actual answers he gives or boons he gives is like, cryptic or puzzling or just weird yes okay yes um i would say probably each faction thinks big differently about him i would say the recollection definitely think him as think of him as a benevolent god mm -hmm. obviously the the heralds want to kill him <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh but like i don't know about uh for josh's um what, what is Josh's faction's name again? Uh, the New Harmony. New Harmony. Yeah, I mean, New that, this is going to be a very interesting thing to think about, mm -hmm. like what the New Harmony actually thinks about that. And we'll get to that, That's obviously. That's what I'm curious about, too. Yeah. Uh, but real quick, um, so just describe to us briefly, Connor, um, how you use each of these things to make 
the wonder? Like how do you, how are the, each of these things used to summon it? Right. So first rare, rare materials. Um, I think uh, they built him uh, like a pyramid, Ooh. like a like a ziggurat that he yeah. sits atop. Okay, perfect. Is this like how big is this cigarette? Cigarette. Uh, oh joy. I don't know. Like, are we talking talking like legit Machu Picchu pyramids of Giza situation, or it's only been five years? Sad day. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking not quite as big as Machu Picchu, but, um, enough to justify the entire recollection, putting together the best of their rare materials to build some sort of giant building. I don't know what you think is realistic for that, or what you think they would even be capable of making in such a cold, in such a time, in such an yeah. age. I mean, they could probably make a sizable temple thing, but it wouldn't be anywhere near like actual wonders of the world size for sure right um so the the wonder is definitely less the building and more the being that lives inside oh certainly yeah certainly um where is it um is it just in the city i don't know is there any way that you can show me the map yep i am not on roll roll 20 um not really Uh, let me picture this in my head so, do you need me to? Oh, wait. You need is do you need? Are you trying to see the DM layer or something? No, he he can't go on roll twenty because he's just on his phone right now. Can I? I can screenshot it and drop it in Facebook Messenger if that would help. Oh yeah. Uh, yes, that would. Or Caleb could even do that. You might have a bigger monitor for this. Yeah, I will. It's on my, it. it's on my low res monitor. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Makes sense. It's awesome. Um. Yeah. I mean, the main question would be like, is it near the city? In the city? I think it's near the city, but I, I want to see if there's like a specific thing that uh, it could be near or on top of. Sure. Like a mountain or in a mountain or. Yeah. I don't know. The first thing that came to my mind was that weird platform thing. Um. But I feel like. Oh. That's... Yeah not necessarily something you could put something on top of i get what you're saying though the um talking about the uh pleasure dome for transcendental drugs and the remixing of dreams yes i mean you could have just repurposed that for this um yeah i guess because that was already a part of the recollections culture and exactly. they already used that correct yeah. mm-hmm. so i feel like that could have been not only part of um them like being like this is the place for you and this is the culmination of all our visions and stuff like that but also i think it was mostly um vision like uh basically uh like convincing the people that um that are, are using the fact that um they've been using this for their visions and all this weird like this is where we get our direction for our civilization from and he's using that as i am the vision and i'm the culmination of all this yeah and so he's he basically uh like like that one movie where those those two guys go to that aztec civilization and pretend to be the two gods Oh, uh, he's basically like Road to El Dorado. Yeah, Road to El Dorado. He's basically doing that. Oh, he's okay. pretending to be their god by knowing their religion well enough to to fake it. Okay, cool. That's lit. I mean, so he's he's what, he's what using demons, their what are demons if religion. if not like in our world if not you know uh, beings that take or create the the fake religions of man and use them for evil, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> So yeah, for, for um, sure. was my was my camera just frozen that whole time? It was, yeah. That's okay. Uh, okay, yeah. So let's do that then. Um, you've re so I repurposed. I don't know the... if he repurposed it or if it's like, yeah, probably, probably, probably repurposed it. Probably t- took it and like, uh, made it into like some sort of ziggurat thing. But it's like, 
mostly that giant dome thing but mm-hmm. i feel like there's just a throne on top of it now sure cool a very large very large throne maybe I mean, on that's top they, of a so that they built the throne out of the rare materials then yeah yeah cool uh what about um, safety obviously, obviously safety i think because the tannerin it cannot be trusted really <laughs> right so um I mean, they don't. We don't have the need of safety now, no. do we? We just don't have the surplus anymore. Yeah. yeah so we, we used to be safe because we were a united front, but now we no longer have that safety. Even though we are still a united front, so there is some safety. We don't have a surplus anymore because the person who's running us cannot be trusted for our own good. Yeah. Uh-huh. But we do what we do anyway. Perfect. Cool. Uh, what about uh, trade? Um, I mean. That could just be specifically the Tannerin telling us we shouldn't trade with people right now, but I think it also could be um, the different civilizations don't want to trade with uh, the demon god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if he um, wrecked them when he came here, I assume everyone doesn't really like yeah. him, <laughs> except for the recollection. Okay, yeah, cool. so it's obviously we don't have a need of for trade. So I think it was just like people are less likely to trade with us now because we're now serving the demon god that kind of destroyed their civilization in part. Sure, cool. Wrecked havoc on their civilization. And then obviously artisans would be the people who made the throne. Uh, yeah. And maybe maybe some of them were killed in the process. I don't know. They overworked themselves to death in a religious fervor? Maybe. I wouldn't I know. know anything about that. <laughs> we should clip that. <laughs> that sounds like I IRL overworked myself in a religious fervor, which is not quite what I was trying to say. <laughs> I should have said the new harmony know nothing about that. Oh yeah, yeah. I, th- I mean, it's funnier if, if you say it as if it was you. Well, I, I mean, I was laughing because I know that his civilization is quite literally <laughs> religious fervor in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Cool. So yeah, it could be it could be any of those things. I don't really know exactly what's the most interesting. Because I don't I don't want to I don't want to say that the Tannerin has already killed artisans i think it, yeah. it i think it was definitely a thing of because because that's not his that's not his game yeah he's, he's that's not his that's not his agenda here so just mm-hmm. mindlessly kill people that would be the black general that would be how he handles things but um vision is definitely handling things in a more diplomatic way so he he probably was inspiring them to to serve him and mm-hmm. uh he probably honestly he probably just wanted to see how if he gave them specific commands to not eat, sleep, or drink any water until they were done to see if they would do it, and they did. <laughs> and then and then most of them died. Wow. That's, oh, that's there you go. That's that's incredible. Okay, so what's awesome about that is um we've now had two games in a row where dehydration is uh, uh someone has forced someone to kill themselves versus dehydration. Um uh Carly's uh- roommate <laughs> Uh, on friday on our burning wheel game uh has has started a cult um and her first like apprentice in this cult she she had her lay down in the forest and not and have to like just literally lay there and not do anything for three days um and so she almost died of dehydration uh, but she uh, maria swooped in, swooped in the last second and saved her um but it was like this weird like cryptic test to like see if the gods came to her or whatever <laughs> So that's hilarious. Mm-hmm. So oh no! Josh, I feel like you would love Maria's character in that game. Seriously, <laughs> I'm gonna so, have to check. Great. Is it streamed? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to check out the vod now. Yeah, Death Under Madness is the name of it. So, uh, cool, cool. So, let's do this then. Every other family says one way the visitant wrecks havoc on their family's holdings, society, or plots, and gains a need of the GM's choice. Um, so yeah, I mean, Josh and Carly, we'll have to talk to David and, and Jared off screen, but, um, about this, but, uh, what do you guys think? 
Uh, and so this, I mean, this can be a spectrum of things, I assume. So it's not like the, the vision actually came to you and like destroyed something of yours mm-hmm. or whatever. Cause he's, it sounds like he's not, that's not his style anyway. Uh, but how did the, the summoning of the visit of the vision um, wreck your stuff? And what need did you get? So we're the new harmony. Mm-hmm. Our thing is like art and architecture and music and all of it interwoven with the tenor and the discordia. Yeah. And we weren't the first ones to build a thing that attracted a tannerin to come <laughs> yeah and be present among us if that's not a, an affront to us as the foremost in the tannerin worship on this planet <laughs> if that's not a a throwing down of the gauntlet to say <laughs> who is the stronger wielder of the discordia. If that's not yeah. a, if, if, if that's not a, a diss track published <laughs> on, on against SoundCloud. the new harmony, their artisans and their very, their very essence that I don't know what is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what what's the need you get from that then? Like prestige? Um, I think that's GM choice. Okay. But I have a couple suggestions yeah, if what you, do you think? morale. Mm, yeah. Honest that makes sense. or not? Well, you already have the need for morale. Actually, morale is a mechanic. I already have the need for morale. Yeah. Um, you're thinking of mood. Okay. Nice, the nice try, Josh. <laughs> the you guys are already no, I... demoralized. <laughs> Literally didn't even look at my yeah. chart. I, I just I recognized just the way it would it interact with my thing. That's what I would have um, done. <laughs> yeah. If it's not, um, yeah, since we're already lacking morale. I think what would be another one prestige maybe because mm-hmm. if like the people are starting to think like oh the recollection is the people in charge of the, the tanner and the discordia stuff now then you could lose prestige from that yeah Might yeah do that one then okay yeah let's go with that cool Uh, morale and prestige. Sorry, you have now I'll mood minus two. It's not good. Uh, Harold. I have no idea. Um, I mean, I it mean could just... obviously it's a Tanerin, so it's gonna mess things up. But it, it could be morale for you, right? It could be like, oh crap, like. Yeah, probably. Like they have a new problem to deal with, and so they're discouraged. Yeah, that's an easy one. Yeah. Your god's been gone for a long time. And oh look, someone built a chair on top of a dome and there comes a tanner in to sit on it. Uh-huh. Like it seems like uh the tanner and maybe aren't gods. It's like oh man, you know why didn't why well why won't my god come back if there's will? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so now the recollection has gone from having mood plus two to mood minus two, matching both the new harmony and the heralds at minus two. Um, the the last watch and the uh, hellbreakers are in the best place right now. Last watch is at plus three, and uh, the hellbreakers are plus two. So. In a good place. Well, cool. So we'll talk to them. Uh, oh, I guess I could just decide for the Hellbreakers what's their what what gets wrecked with them because uh, their mood will go down by one. Then, um, let's see. What, what did what did Carly choose? Morale. 
basically just like, oh, great, we have another problem to deal with, as if we didn't have enough. Oh, okay, yeah. And what did what did he what did he do to her civilization? I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. I mean, not necessarily a whole lot, except for existing. Uh, but that's enough to give them a need, okay. right? Um, I I think right. the vision is has probably it's less about the vision doing something directly to them and just more about like what the vision's appearance has done indirectly to their their factions. That it seems more his style anyway. Because, uh, yeah, I think the way it's worded it doesn't necessarily have to mean that the visitant, like, it's it, it's directly and personally doing this. It's just, like, one way the visitant wrecks havoc on their family's holdings, right? Like, could it just be the fact that this exists? How does that change things for them? Uh, cool. Let's see. Hellbreakers. Let's see. They have leadership, safety, and defenses for surpluses and the need of justice. Um, I don't know if they'd get if any of their surpluses would like get marked at all. Uh, I'm trying to find a page that has all the resources on it. Uh, you guys have any thoughts? I totally spaced. On um, Hellbreakers, um, what might what might be the the thing that the visitant does to them? Assassinates their leaders. <laughs> does I don't that know. sound like the something the vision would do? No. Yeah, exactly. I I think I think anything that the the um, that he's doing to other civilizations is is um, more just about. Um, like a psychological effect rather than like yeah. actually wreaking physical havoc on them. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know enough about the Hellbreakers. I mean, yeah, easy, easy one could be morale, but um... uh, what if I say recruits? Like, what if because the Hellbreakers are so newly into the Discordia, maybe this thing appearing has basically showed a bunch of them like, oh, wait a second, we joined the wrong people who are in charge of the Tannerin and Discordia. Like, these guys are obviously more powerful, and if this is what we're doing now, then I guess we need to just go join them. Manual labor, yeah. memory drugs. <laughs> exactly. I like that. Yeah. That's super interesting. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> As the Hellbreakers are in need of some peeps. Uh, well, cool. Uh, what do we want to? What do we want to start with? Uh, beyond that, right? So the the wonder has been made. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna zoom in from here, I won't be able to stay uh, right. too late. Yeah. Which is which is fine. I'm I'm cool with you acting whatever for my character, but just so everybody's aware. Yeah, I mean, well, let's, if, if there's any family stuff that wants to be, that people want to do, we can start with that. Um, I have we, there's obviously some things that I have kind of listed as notes for based on. Uh, oh, you know what we need to do first, actually. Um, we need to go through, and I wish Jared was here, um, but oh well, we'll just do this anyway. Um, let's go through the characters and do their new backstory options. Right, the little things you ask volunteers for, like the bonds or whatever you have for with people. Oh yeah. Um, because we have new characters now, so let's go ahead and run through that real quick. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I'll just do Rivas real quick first. Um, I respect Blank's concern for others. Who's someone that maybe maybe it's Josh's character because I'm in the New Harmony, helping with the New Harmony now. Maybe she knows about you and is like, oh yeah, you're cool. Yeah. Do you have a concern for others? Um, I'm not sure. Probably. To some degree. Because I'm not sure she would think that about any other character in this. Yeah. Calicrates is very anti-hero-ish, if anything. Most of these characters are. 
but he's also like anti-hero-ish in the evil faction. <laughs> so does that right. make him an actual hero? <laughs> I've, I've I've had to wrestle with that particular uh-huh. question since I created the evil faction. Um, yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, I'll play that angle. Why not? I think that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he respe- uh, she respects Calicrati's concern for others. Um, Blank has grown fat on the backs of others' labor. I feel like he pro- she probably thinks that of Cassius now. Sure. Because of the Last Watch's new thing. Uh, and then Blank can teach me to understand this new world. Uh, technically, nobody has to answer one of these. Um, but... I mean, it might also be Calicrates for that one, too. Yeah, it might be. Like, I feel like it might be... Maybe you guys know each other, and she's... You're kind of helping her get situated in the New Harmony in some ways. That would be a fun angle to play. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's had some more experience with the Discordia and that whole deal. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm done with that. I, I like that too because then it kind of helps tie some of these characters together a little bit more and gives Ariva a specific like um, person in the New Harmony to actually like talk to. Uh, cool. Well, let's do you next, Calicrates. All right. Um, Blank's art collection is remarkable. Where did they get all that? <laughs> Um. Yeah. What do we think? I mean, maybe the heralds, because they've just like. Yeah, I mean, been th- on this, this would be this would be you specifically. And... Maybe Seraphiel yeah. just has an art collection for some reason. Is that? Yeah, incorrect? I'm down with that. Yeah, that's interesting. I have like settled nothing about her character in my mind, other than she's cool. So. <laughs> there we go. And art collections are cool. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I I really want to play that out now. I want to see Calcutta. going to the Herald specifically to be like, "Hey, can I take a look at your art collection?" <laughs> All right, I like that. Ooh, okay. Here's a cool one. Um, the love of Blank's life is my wildest pupil. No wonder it ended in heartache. Wow. This is your wildest pupil. I'm kind of wondering if it would be um, either Cassius or uh, Iskander. I maybe not Iskander. I don't actually know anything about him. He's probably, probably not even human. Yeah. He probably doesn't even follow the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm-hmm. Um. Like I don't know, maybe wouldn't be Reva's didn't they make doesn't really make a lot of sense for Reva so, we haven't no. seen we haven't even seen that side of Reva ever uh we have a little bit so the the one like solo session that I did she had like she kind of briefly talked about when she was younger she was talking to the guy she used to basically like have a crush on who was like the former leader of the the hellbreakers but it was basically like I used to be in love with you, I think, and it's just turned into admiration, and now it's turned into disappointment because you aren't what I thought you were going to be. Um, but that's as far as we've ever gone with Reva. Mm-hmm. We know he, she's heterosexual, at the very least. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm we'll, not sure there's we'll a good person We'll hold that one that. to yeah. see if Cassius wants to chime in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't think it would be Iseret. Um, because Iserud is not a person right now. <laughs> She's like a, a legion of demons. So. <laughs> oh yeah, no, probably not. All right. Yeah. Uh, Most of the characters boy. are inhuman at this point. So. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Cassius is the closest to human, aside from um, Reva. Calicrates, uh, Calicrates, oh, Cal- 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 is probably like the closest to Cal- human Cal- at this point. 
especially because I... I don't remember how you pronounce it. Yeah. Calacratis. Oh, I'm, I'm not. It, it's a it's a forward, not a back. On the R, it's a tongue tap. Calacratis. Calacratis. Okay. At least that's uh, how I did cool. it last time. Disclaimer: All the Greek I learned was from two books in high school. <laughs> It's been years. I never had proper pronunciation training. Look, if 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 I don't if I'm butchering the Greek, don't add me. <laughs> well, uh, last one then, I guess. <laughs> you technically don't have to like fill in all these, so. Mm -hmm. uh, blank has so much talent. If only they devoted themselves fully to art. Hmm. It could be Riva. I feel like we've tied a lot of bond between our two factions. Yeah. We don't really have, and, and like, there's not a whole lot of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out there. For that lack of a been. better term, connective tissue. Yeah. <laughs> between my faction and others besides yours. Yeah. Well, who else would you have? had contact with and to like see that someone else had artistic talent right that's what i'm trying to think right um like it could be seraphiel 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 sorry <laughs> it could be seraphiel um but she's also a robot <laughs> yeah right but, she, but she's a robot with a soul so like art it's an art collection yeah but yeah. then you, you already have the thing about the art collection so it might be interesting to do yeah that. yeah you could just ask David and jo uh, Jared um, about these last two and see if either of them jump at it. Yeah, we'll save it for the next time. Because I, I guess. very much doubt it'll be Easteret again. <laughs> yeah, a legion of demons doesn't seem like it would have much talent <laughs> for art. No offense, yeah. don't possess me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Well, let's move right along here. Uh, obviously, Cassius has to do his, but we'll we'll go to that when we get there. Uh, and then uh, Sarah Feel. Uh, I cannot find the the book. I, I you're on. It's on um, roll twenty. Oh. I pinged everybody to it. There's little backstory options right there. Yeah. Roll twenty's taking a lot of the load. Mm hmm. What am I looking at? Uh, the backstory op uh, fill things there. Very small. Um. Blank has experienced loss, but bears their scars with pride. Um, could be Cassius. Honestly, I feel like it could be mostly anyone. Yeah. Because everybody has experienced loss, and everyone has the potential to bear their scars with I pride. I feel like she would think that about Riva. Yeah. But, but do you think about her in the like bad pride sense um or good pride probably bad yeah because yeah. i think where haraho was more sympathetic towards riva but still frustrated at her actions i yeah. think seraphiel is going to be more like Ugh, you're such a stupid little girl like cool yeah <laughs> you're ruining everything <laughs> awesome I'm done. Play that out. Uh, cool. Uh, does Blink even realize the harm they've caused my people? <laughs> um, it's like a Riva answer. It could also be Easter yeah. though. Yeah. Oh, well, no, I think it's more, more Easter Yeah, I feel like it would be Easter there. That makes sense, Connie. Connor.
Uh, sorry, I was I was off the screen and I couldn't unmute myself. I started talking, but um, uh, can you can you say it again though? Yeah. Does Iserat even realize the harm they've caused my people? That as like the one of the bonds here, the backstory things for for Carly's Herald character. Right. It makes sense because Iserat has even even realize the harm he's she he, she's caused my people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. But I'm just the wee little ass. Well, actually, I feel like one. those two would be switched. Because I think that one makes more sense for Reva, and the first one makes more sense for Iseret. Wouldn't you know what Iseret is, though? That's the thing. Yeah, Iseret isn't herself right now, right? Iseret is, a, when, you, when you say Iseret, you mean the legion of demons that are possessing your Iseret's body. Right, Iseret as a personality well, has yeah. ceased to exist for right now, and and I feel like Seraphiel would only be familiar with the Iseret that is the Legion of Demons, and so I don't think she she bears her scars with pride because she it's unclear to everyone if, that she's even experienced lust at all. That's fair. Yeah, I guess if Harahel was saying this, oh then yeah, certainly, yeah, would, yeah, yeah, that it would make more sense, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially since Seraphiel probably knows that Easterhead is the one that killed Harahel. Yes. So, exactly. actually, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And the last one? Uh, I respect the wisdom of Blank's cult. <laughs> Why keep it a secret? <laughs> what? That would be hilarious, <laughs> except it makes zero sense for me to volunteer for that one. <laughs> I mean, I, mean I feel like it's with Jared's character, right? It might be. Actually, that's what oh. I was thinking, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I think Cass I mean, Cassius is space Jesus now, right? Like, so <laughs> he might have started some sort of weird, like... Well, because he... I'm, yeah, he's the one that, like... He probably started out, a religion. Like, God is coming back, Exactly, right? yeah. So... Yeah, okay, this is interesting. I'm sure Jared would be totally down with this. We have to obviously ask him, but I'm mm -hmm. sure he'd be ask down him. with having like a little cult that he's started. Yeah. <laughs> the guy who wanted, who literally asked to become Space Jesus, you're going to have to ask him if he wants a cult. <laughs> yeah. The guy gets a cult <laughs> because he's going to say yes to that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, cool. Lastly, but not leastly, uh, Easter Yeah. Yeah. Did you, like, um, did you like how I uh, paused the the uh, camera this time yes. on my smiling mm -hmm. face? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll try to do that every time. Okay. Uh, I'll just read these off for you, obviously, because you can't look at roll 20. Um, okay, yeah. I foresaw Blank's fate, and it still awes me. <laughs> Anyone have a good idea for what that might be? I would think Jared's character. Cassius, yeah. Jared is the most destiny yeah. re revolved around character at this point in time. Yeah, for sure. That's fair. Uh, what did you foresee? Because um, it awed you. His rise to power and then his sudden fall. <laughs> mm, okay. Cool. Uh, Blank's bargain for power might have doomed us all. Or, or uh, to kind of rephrase that, his, yeah. his, his rise to power and then his, like... Slow descent. Uh, no, I would say. Did I say sudden fall? You did. Something oh, like okay. Then yeah, that's fine. Then yeah. No, like so, like his slow crawl to power kind of a thing, and then his immediate downfall. Yeah. Cool. So it's kind of like a Deus Ex Machina. Everything isn't great, and then it gets shot in the back by lightning. <laughs> reverse Deus Ex Machina. Right. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, Blank's bargain for power might have doomed us all. Um, Reva, but like you, Cat, oh, Reva or Cassius, or Cassius, that's both true. could be good answers here. <laughs> um, you could also make up that someone else is it was like someone else can volunteer. Like Sarah, Sarah Field could just randomly volunteer and say she bargained for power. That would be kind of cool. Could also be a scander. Uh, who is a scander? Uh, David's character for this age, the uh, his immortal dude who's like a weird sorcerer. He's like a weird sorcerer. We haven't we haven't met him yet. Okay. Um, 
he was like the guy who was like technically in charge of the perihelions and he like he's in the desert somewhere right now yeah anyone have an idea um so yeah it could be it, Reva, it, it, could be cassius cassius is david's character right cassius is jared's oh jared's character iskander Space is Jesus. is david's oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. okay all right um Wait, who, which one is David's, did you say? Uh, Iskander. Iskander. The and then Reva is also one of David's characters? No, Reva is my character, the Hellbreakers. Okay. Yeah, I'm confused by all the names, but it's okay. <laughs> um, would it be interesting to do Reva? Or did Reva already do that, so it makes sense to write that as her? I mean, she already bargained for power, but it hasn't doomed us all yet. Oh, right, okay. Um... Yeah, I kind of want to. Well, I kind of want to do Cass. Well, no, I just did Cass. You can do Cassius right? again. You get like, if you have backstory with like, two backstory with someone, you get bon- more bonus to like roll against them or whatever. Roll against them or for them, either one. Or for them. I'm kind of thinking Cassius again sure. because I think those two directly line together. Yeah. Of like, I saw his fate, and because he. Uh, um, either compromises one of these times or because he bargained for power and like did unite the world against the Tanneran. That was the inevitable doubt. That was yeah. the actual thing that caused the destruction of the world. Nice. I think that'd be super interesting. Yeah. That like uh, he gets all of his people together in one place and the Tanneran just slaughter them all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I think it'd be super interesting. For sure. Or or they put all their eggs in one basket, Cassius. And mm-hmm. if he makes the wrong move, yeah. he, everything collapses. And talk about morale would collapse because if everybody's united under a one person, mm-hmm. all the Tanner and have to do is kill that one person and then it's over. Cool. Uh, and then lastly, does Blank know of the monsters among them? Ooh. I like this underlighting. I'm thinking maybe Carly's character. Ooh, that that's what sense. I was going to say. That would be really fun mm-hmm. to play that angle a little bit. Of like, there are traitors um, around her kind of a thing. Does she realize the monsters hey, around I mean, her? Mean literal, metaphorical. And, and you're a race of cyborgs or robots? Robots. Basically, robots. robots basically, they're like constructs with souls. Yeah. What if uh, what if they were reprogrammed? I mean that that it, it brings up an interesting question whether or not the herald's soul means that their robotness can't be tempered with in that way, right? Or well, if well, that doesn't. We don't need to mess with their soul. We can mess with their mind. If we can right. if we can mess with their memories, we can make them think anything. Yeah. And their soul can react appropriately yeah. to the yeah. fake memories inside their head. That's entirely true. That's fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, Carly, are you okay with that possibility? Because uh, if not, I'll just pick something else. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. I don't want to to make things suck too bad for you by, by yeah. trying to make some sort of prophecy. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, we don't have to lock it in specifically to that. We could see oh, yeah. at monsters yeah. among them because, yep. like, right. I have some ideas. We reinterpreted well. a lot of these backstory things as we went last time, which was right. honestly yeah. fun because they're so vague that, like, I think mm-hmm. we ended up finding a lot of hidden meaning in them as we just kind right. of, like, played out uh, yeah. the game. Uh, I mean, I feel like I might as well just go ahead and read off Iskander and Cassius's because it's about you guys, not them, right? So, real, real quick, um, and we can obviously change these if David or Jared is, doesn't think about it uh, in those ways, but because they because they ask for a volunteer, right? That's what the whole point of this is. So, mm-hmm. um, I still remember this is for Iskander. Uh, so this, you know, crazy, powerful, immortal sorcerer dude. Um, um. I still remember I how remember Blank how reacted Blank when they first saw me. I mean, that could, I mean, be, that a, could be a... That could be Sarah. Sarah, Sarah feel. It, it, does have, it have to be related to other player characters? Yes, it ha- one of the player characters has to answer this, yeah. 
Okay. And this so, is for Jared or David? This is for David, right? So I still remember David. how Blank reacted when they first saw me. Um, so it, yeah. So again, his his form is really weird. Your body was comprehensively twisted by the fall. So oh, that's yeah. something true about him. Um, I mean, yeah, I think my character. Yeah, because... it'd be fun. My character probably has a very set idea of what, you know, kind of like image of God kind of thing. Oh, of like sure. What it's supposed to look like. Yeah. And then she it's, sees it something that's clearly messed up about it. She's like, I don't like that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, how did you react? Was it like literally like you're something unholy. I need to smite you or just like weird it out. Uh, probably just weird it out. Uh, Blank welcomed me as one of their own. Well, definitely not my character. <laughs> I can't necessarily see that being New Harmony either. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure any of these people would say yes to this. A scanner is a really just an outsider in general, yeah. mm -hmm. like has been an outsider. That's their like the previous, for lack of a better term, life path. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess the last one, if we can just ignore that one, uh, blank made me do something terrible. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone really fits that one either. We could probably just come back to it. I mean, Maybe. unless unless by terrible he means terrible to him and not terrible in general. No, it'd just because... be terrible in general. I mean, yeah, it could be Easter yeah. at Connor. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I don't know what exactly. She I mean, we did, don't even have but... to fill in. We can just say, yeah, let's put that down and then talk to David and you about it later and just figure out what yeah. that was. Cool. <laughs> David, if you are watching this uh, in the future. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and then Jared's character, real quick, Cassius. Um, Blank has fought shoulder to shoulder with me. Let me look at what he had for the first age for these. Um, I would assume a scander. No, right? he had uh, Iserat as this, actually. We never oh, did. No, we no, never... I mean... Oh, oh. I mean, now I'm a, I would assume the standard since the Perihelions and uh, new Last Watcher yeah. kind of in cahoots. Yeah, that makes totally sense. It could also be Seraphiel, though. Oh yeah, that actually might be more interesting. For what? Uh, for Cassius's um, blank has fought shoulder to shoulder with me. Oh yeah, yeah. I can see that. Right, like there was some sort of mission you guys went on together or mm -hmm. something uh cool so blank once left me for dead Did that, that actually... smells like a scander to me but oh yeah uh well hmm. could be like yeah distant past kind of deal right could have been a scander thing like calicarates isn't exactly a warrior yeah. Yeah, let's put him a scander, and then we can come back to that with him. And then lastly, Blank is smart enough to be worth keeping around. Oh, last last time we had uh, Episciazzo says that one, the once left me for dead. Oh, yeah. Episciazzo's once left me for dead. Uh, and then for this one, we had Harhel. Uh, Blank is smart enough to keep worth keeping around. They're at uh, Order 66 in the movie upstairs. <sighs> so oh, sad. No. I did hear the the bird lizard thing oh, in did the background. You? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty iconic noise. Mm -hmm. more, more, more? <laughs> yeah. Did I do it right? It's honestly, I think that's my probably my like favorite Star Wars creature of all time. Is oh, that that's thing? incredible. It's, it's great. Uh, yeah, Blink is smart enough to be worth keeping around. Could be well, keeping around is probably like an interesting term here because Cassius is like the leader of an empire. I could see Cassius wanting to imprison a, 
really capable architect and force them to design buildings. Yeah, we could put Calicrasis down for this. I feel like I'm that makes sure. sense. I don't... Yeah, that would be my argument, is that he sees mm -hmm. use in Calicrasis' skill. You and Iskander are the only people who are actually smart. So... Mm. <laughs> So that seems likely. Uh, cool. Well, there you go. Uh, well, do we, I mean, do you want to do, Connor, how much time do you have, you think? I think maybe an hour. Um, I'm going to have to go somewhere. I'll have to turn off my camera for a little bit too, though, but I don't want to know if that will mess up the overlays. Uh, it will. Um, but if you could just go off of the Zoom app, it'll pause and it won't actually... Right, it will just freeze okay, on yeah, something. I can, I can. Yeah, that that will that will work. Um, that exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, let's do this then. Before, I'm so gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to stare at that for the next hour. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I guess yeah, question, right. question for you guys: Do we want to take a quick break now, or? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I will need to take a break in a minute or two okay. anyway. Sure. Yeah, sounds good. This seems like a good uh, break point anyway. Uh, cool. Let's uh, take a break quick and come back with more Hellbreaker sequence when we return. We'll do some family moves, zoom in maybe, uh, figure out what's going on with everybody else uh, in the uh, the more personal scheme of things rather than the kind of backstory uh, age turn stuff. So we'll return in just a moment. Hellbreaker sequence.